Hello everyone, it's story time. So a lot of people have tried to sort of bring back the Christmas season, uh, which is my favorite time of the year personally. And it's always a time that makes me feel happy and sort of at peace, even in the midst of what might be sort of a scary or uncertain time. So today we're gonna read a story that is a great Christmas story. And it's also one of my favorite pieces of music and ballet. Um, it's called The Nutcracker. So if you listen carefully, you might hear some of the music of the Nutcracker from Tchaikovsky in the background. We're going to read the story of the Nutcracker about a little girl named Clara and a very special present. Here we go. The Nutcracker, retold by Rita Balducci and illustrated by Barbara Lanza. Once there was a little girl named Clara whose family was having a wonderful party on Christmas Eve. There was a beautiful Christmas tree and lots of delicious food. Clara ran back and forth to the front door to welcome the guests. Merry Christmas, she said as each one kissed her on the cheek. Then they all went inside to dance and eat and open their Christmas presents. The last to arrive was Clara's godfather, Herr Drosselmeyer. All the children loved him very much because he was such a wonderful storyteller. Clara thought he could even perform magic. Merry Christmas, Clara, he said, handing her a heavy package. Merry Christmas, and thank you, Clara cried, lifting a large wooden nutcracker from the wrappings. He looks like a very brave soldier, she said. And so he is, Air Drosselmeyer replied. Just then, the musicians began to play a lively time, a lively tune, and all the grown-ups joined together to dance. Clara carried her nutcracker over to where her cousins and friends were all playing with their new dolls. She held him up very carefully and hummed a soft Christmas carol. All of a sudden, Clara's little brother Fritz jumped up from behind the sofa and grabbed the nutcracker away from his sister. Oh dear. No, Fritz, no, Clara cried, chasing him. Soon all the children were running after Fritz. But the Nutcracker was very heavy, and Fritz was, very, was a very little boy. The Nutcracker crashed to the floor and broke. Sadly, Clara picked up her injured Nutcracker and showed him to her Uncle Drosselmeyer. Why, Clara, he said, trying, tying his handkerchief around the Nutcracker's broken jaw. Many good soldiers get hurt in battle. This will be his bandage, and you will be his nurse. And he wiped his tears away and handed the Nutcracker back to her. Clara was a very good little nurse. She gently tucked the Nutcracker into the doll's bed she had received as a Christmas present. She stayed by his side until all the guests had gone home. Then she kissed him goodnight and went up to bed. But Clara could not stop thinking about the Nutcracker. So back downstairs she crept and lifted him from his little bed. Then she curled up on the sofa and fell asleep with the Nutcracker in her arms. While Clara was sleeping, Herr Drosselmeyer came into the room. He quietly took the handkerchief off the Nutcracker's jaw and gently waved it over Clara and the Nutcracker. Suddenly, the Nutcracker changed into a handsome prince, standing guard over Clara while she slept. <laughs> Later that night, Clara woke up. Oh my goodness, she cried, for tremendous mice were running all over the room. Then she saw her nutcracker, who was now a handsome prince. He was bravely fighting a mouse that was wearing a crown on its head. Leave him alone, Clara shouted at the wicked mouse. She jumped off the sofa and pulled the mouse's long tail. The mouse became so frightened that it ran away with all the other mice squeaking after it. Thank you for your help, said the prince, picking up the crown which had fallen from the mouse's head. I would like to invite you to the land of sweets, so all my friends can thank you too. The prince placed the crown on Clara's head, and her nightgown became a beautiful dress that shimmered and shined. Together they stepped outside. The falling snow whisked around them like pretty white, like a pretty white dance, carrying them to the land of sweets. living in the land of sweets was named after delicious things to eat. When the prince and Clara arrived, he told his friends about the battle and the huge mice and how Clara had saved him. Hooray!
Hooray for Clara, they all cried, and they carried Clara and the prince over two beautiful candy cane chairs. Oh, look at the chairs. The people of the Land of Sweets performed a beautiful dances for Clara and the prince. The first to perform were the candy cane princes wearing red stripes. Then the dainty sugar plum fairy danced with a soldier. The dewdrop fairy gracefully twirled before them and followed many little angels with tiny wings. Even the flowers danced in the land of sweets, waving their pretty petals. Clara's favorite dancer was Mother Ginger. She wore a, bright, a big wide skirt and underneath it was six, she wore a big wide skirt and underneath it were six little children. They raced out and took each other's hands, dancing together in a circle, laughing and skipping. When their turn was over, they scrambled back under Mother Ginger's wide skirt. And when all the other dancers had finished, Clara and the prince stood up and they clapped and clapped. Here's that picture. And did I remember to show you the candy cane princess? That'll be it. Here we go. I think it's time for us to go, the prince said, but I will come back to the land of sweets every Christmas Eve from now on. Then he called for his sleigh, which was drawn by two reindeer, and after waving goodbye to their friends, Clara and the prince flew off together into the early morning sky, home to a very Merry Christmas. The end. I hope you enjoyed this story and a little bit of taste of Christmas, even if it is March. Have a wonderful day.